So when people say we shouldn't rely on supplements and we shouldn't rely on ASEA, we shouldn't rely on herbs, that's a bit like saying, okay, we shouldn't rely on perfect functioning of the body. We, should, we, we, we rather should be um, uh, okay with living a, a half, half lived life. You see, this is, the, this is the problem we're having you now. In Chinese medicine, we say that the human being is designed to reach extraordinary performances. We are designed to become superhuman, super. We are endlessly evolving to something that we can't comprehend yet. <clears throat> so limitations and limit, limiting beliefs don't belong in this medicine. So if you're driving a high performance car, you need to give the car very specific petrol. Otherwise you can't get the experience of the Lamborghini. Yeah, if you put um, um, a McDonald's type, type of, or a fast food type or junk food type of petrol into the Lamborghini, it feels like a Hyundai. But if you put the, pot, the real petrol in it, bang, the car really just runs and it's best. And then you, when you stop the car, you can't say, ah, oh, it's the petrol that makes the Lamborghini. It's the petrol which is the high experience. Now the supplements is nothing else than actually bringing up the high performance of the body so that we can move to higher realms. So from that perspective, we need to understand that we are here in the physical to expand. And this is where anxiety comes into. And this is where worry comes into. Because what the situation is that, um, that when we don't function effectively in our body, we're feeling something's not quite right. And anxiety is a warning signal on the dashboard of the car saying you aren't connected. There's something that needs to be looked at. So it's like a signal saying there needs to be something to look at. Yes. So we can't ignore this symptom and to override it with medication only makes it worse because we don't fixing the problem and trying to use our mind to override it doesn't work either because obviously anxiety is designed in order to, take our intention to something that needs to be improved, that needs to be realized, that needs to be set up. Yes. So, but before I go into it, I need to say that I personally actually have experienced anxiety on a very high level myself. I went through years of panic disorders, panic attacks and high level anxiety where I was scared all the time to do anything. So I can completely understand when people say I suffer from anxiety because I actually have felt it myself. Obviously, I went all back many years, a few decades ago when I had to deal with this, but I looked at from every possible ability aspect to, to correct it with my mind. <clears throat> so I went to do counseling. I, I seeked um, uh, uh, trauma resolving counseling, but nothing really got to the point of it the anxiety constantly hit. And when it hit me, it was spontaneous when I least expected it out of the blue, suddenly bang. And then it turned into panic attack and then I couldn't breathe proper. And uh, I felt like this is it, I'm gonna die. And I couldn't do anything, it was paralyzing me. And obviously I was forced to look into other than using the mental construct that is so dominating in this Western world. And um, so I had to look at other issues. And yeah. this, obviously that led me into the chi cycle lifestyle, that led me, led me into all of the things. These days, I don't have any problems with anxiety, I don't have panic attacks, nothing. So I resolved it all with, with Chinese medicine, with herbs, with supplements, and obviously, yeah, with us here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's amazing, isn't it? Like I think, in, in fact, it's a real blessing because I had 20 years where I had a lot of pain and I, I really, couldn't rely on my body a lot of the time didn't have the life that I wanted when I when I had my infections and stuff and and I really had to change my mindset about it to see that the pain in the body the the, the messages the disease were messages and if I was listening to them and I was responding to them I was better able to manage it and, and eventually absolutely overcome it um, so I started to look at my challenges as a blessing you know and I just totally flipped it on its head and transform my life and and it's amazing how the body and the mind does that hey sometimes things get so bad that you have to look outside the box you have to evolve with your approach to health and well-being 
Yes, so, I, yeah, I didn't know you had those challenges. Good, thanks for sharing. Yes, yeah, oh, it was pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, I, man, I, I shared my journey before you got on. <laughs> my journey was freaking intense too. I nearly died. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that long ago. It was only seven years ago. <laughs> I've been the anxiety at my peak. I couldn't go into elevators. I couldn't go into shopping centers. I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And I, I was always a car lover. I always had very hot cars. And one day I parked my hot BMW in the car park and I couldn't get it out. Yeah. And it was the, the panic, the anxiety suddenly took me. I could not get down those stairs into the car park at Myers. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I sat there panting with a heartbeat that felt like 300 beats per minute yeah. and ready for heart attack. Yeah. And I'm shaking all over and I thought I'd go and get a seizure and all kind of shit. Yeah, not um, fun, not fun. Yeah, I, had, I actually yeah. had two patients as a paramedic and, and we called intensive care paras to come in and, and then we had three paras, some of the best paras on duty in Brisbane and we could not tell the difference between a panic attack and a heart attack. Yes. The ECG, like everything, the whole state of shock, we could not tell. It was only once we got to the hospital and, and the time of you know, getting, them on, getting them in the bus and getting them in the ambulance and getting them there, that kind of helps just things naturally unwind. And when they got a blood test, we could prove, okay, they actually haven't had a heart attack, but symptom-wise, we could not tell a difference. Wow. Pretty scary. One guy was like 24, 25, like... 26 young young guy you know on his way to work just having a meltdown in the car <laughs> it was bad another guy was like he was on the ground in his apartment and he's like flailing around and like you know massive pain totally white you know looked like he had hypovolemic shock like he'd lost all his blood and and you know i kind of laugh about it because if i don't laugh about it i cry about it so i'm not trying to demean it in any way that it was just a panic attack a panic attack can be as bad as a heart attack <laughs> in the moment. You know, like it was shocking. So can actually a panic attack turn into a heart attack? Oh, I'm sure it can, right? Yeah, I've, I've got like, it's going to cause a lot of bad physiological changes. And if you get a block, if you get a clot, you're in trouble, right? But, mm. uh, but even the ECGs were changing. Wow. Mm. Okay, because in Chinese medicine, panic attacks are directly related to blood not flowing. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's like it. So that's where in Chinese medicine, blood circulation at certain acupuncture points is constricted. There you go. A heart attack is an occlusion, like a blockage, so the blood can't flow through that. that yeah. Concurrent. So the first thing what we need to do, obviously, we've got to look at it. It's not in the mind. It's in the body. Yeah. So all the counselors I went to to address my panic attacks, they all said it's in your mind. Yeah, that's the, the traditional panic approach. Is is because you just described the same situation. It's that exactly that correlates with, with my understanding from Chinese medicine and how I personally resolve panic attacks and anxiety and all the, all the countless and thousands of people I work with because I've, I've seen so many people in my time with panic attacks and anxiety. All of them are completely healed. Don't have any anxiety anymore, no yeah. panic attacks. That's awesome. I'm sure there's a few people listening that would like that. <laughs> never, never to worry again, no, 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 that anxiety. Because this is what the description you use is exactly how I look at it from, from my perspective, how I managed it and then healed it and then completely transformed it. And that's actually from a Chinese medicine perspective, blood flow constricted in acupuncture point that control the blood flow to the brain. Mm. And as a result of that is they're constricted. They also are correlated with the heart. Obviously now you get the pumping of the heart because he wants to pump the chi through. He wants to pump the blood through. So that's why it correlates with a heart attack feeling. So, which is why it feels like you're going to get it, this bang, that's cardiac arrest and you're dead. And um, so it's, it has actually, from a Chinese medicine perspective, it's a virtual heart attack. Mm, yeah. It is virtual. That means, um, so what, what rectifies it is obviously blood flow. <clears throat> and um, the acupuncture points most responsible for that is the gallbladder point around the hip. And GB29, GB30, and then the, the Dantian point which is um, uh, rent two, rent three, rent four, which is below the navel. And so um, these acupuncture points are responsible for the blood flow all around the body. And therefore, when, when under a attack, like a panic attack, those points will actually activate the chi flow and then make the blood flow and then the, the heart will be at ease. So what we do in panic attacks in Chinese medicine is we, we put the heart at ease. 
and how do you put the heart at ease in Chinese medicine that's regulated by the five elements and the water controls the fire the, the heart belongs to the fire and the dantian point belongs to the to the to the water so that means the water puts the fire down mm -hmm. so a panic attack is nothing else than fire getting out of control so what the situation is suddenly the mind races it goes ahead of itself mm -hmm. and now it's too much going on overthinking mm -hmm. and that means in chinese medicine it means fire is out of control and um so the, the what we're going to do now is obviously you put water on it that's what you do yeah the fire rages put water down so the mind belongs to the fire element to the heart so if you if the fire rages it's out of control panic attack and now you're going to use the mind which belongs to the fire element you're actually putting petrol into the fire yeah you have to go elsewhere you have to put water onto the fire not petrol every human being knows you can't put fire down with petrol yeah that is so good that is so good yeah. i just want to apologize like we had this recording and the facebook live is on and i don't know how but it kicked it off and it stopped the recording so i restarted that and i apologize for everyone that's coming to late we've had some it issues with zoom today um, but I, that, that's what happened to me when I was very young. I had these massive epiphanies about how traditional Chinese medicine has a completely different approach. And you're saying how counselors are trying to use the mind to stop, you know, anxiety, which is a mind problem. I had doctors telling me all my Lyme disease was in the mind, you know, my whole body was shaking and like, that is not in my mind, man. I've lost control of my body. Like, what planet are you on? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... I remember when my worst year was 22, I was just having a horrible year and just the basic symbology of the yin and yang. If I just did all the habits that were opposite to what my life was like to take it into a different direction, I could get balance back into my life. And the five element theory, which is a bit more advanced. And if, if a lot of people may not know what, what that is on the call, some of you probably do being able to just purely identify, put water on the fire, you know, do everything you can to generate water on the fire. What a totally different strategy to what you'd hear from a mainstream counselor. It's amazing. And once you understand how to do it, um, every time there's an onset of an anxiety or a panic attack, a feeling, you immediately activate water over fire. So, so what we need is physical technique to control anxiety. And the physical techniques, first of all, obviously, all, all, all around the core. So this 15 minute workout that I've been mentioning every webinar. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is like, that's like Xanax for panic attacks. <laughs> I've already plugged it and I've put your website and, and stuff in the chat box. I'll put it on the Facebook live too, but that's right. Like, like movement makes such a big impact. It's like 10 milligrams of Xanax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Taking every day. <laughs> um, because that, that 50 minute workout activates exactly those points that are responsible for the circulation of blood throughout the body to put the heart at ease. Yes, that's what we want. We want to put the heart at ease because it's racing, put the heart at ease. So that's the first thing we need to understand that any kinds of anxiety, um, panic and attack, panic attacks and anxiety are the same category. So anxiety eventually will move into panic attacks. So, um, so that means they're all in the same boat in terms of the development. So, um, so that means for when we, the first thing what we need to understand is in order to control anxiety in our life, we need to have strong core. We need strong core in our life. The core represents the water on fire. If the core is strong, you automatically override the fire. That means bang. So, you will see that in martial art training um, because in martial art training, you're dealing with fear and anxiety and panic all the time. That's like your prime emotion. That's the prime sensation. If you go into a fight, it, it wants to take you to anxiety. It wants to get away. Yeah. So what, what we train in martial art is to immediately control that sensation by going into the core. We're using our hip. So if, if you go into a fight, into a sparring session, and you've got, you got like lots of onlookers, and it's, it's, it's an enormous an anxiety goes through your roof in that moment. Mm -hmm. But now you're pressing all the energy, you're condensing yourself into your belly. You're condensing yourself into your hips. 
well, like, like a New Zealand warrior, haka, ah, ah, ah. You go into your legs, you go boom, really, really low. The more you go, in, the more you go into your legs, the lower you go, the more you activate the fire. That means the more you activate the water to control the fire. Oh, you totally said the right thing then, Yost. I know, I know you've got a few uh, Kiwis on the call that are, you know, they've got a bit oh, okay. of a crush on you. They're pretty impressed with what you say. So you, you just lit them right up there <laughs> with the haka. No, because that's what they do. You know, it's like it's, before they go into the wall, they activate the hip muscles. The it's hip. so powerful. So the powerful. Muscle. Yes. And statistically so significant with the All Blacks being the highest winning sports team at that level in the world. And yes. it's before every game. Yes, yeah, because it's, I mean, it scares the shit out of everyone else. <laughs> yeah, but it fires them up too. Like, and I yeah, yeah. workshops and stuff like that. We've done it, and you know, like beating yourself and ah, like expressing that kind of really strong yang chi. Uh, you just feel invincible. Yeah, and in that moment, there's no anxiety. If you are in the belly, if you are heavily into the core, if you if you right in the hips. You can't have anxiety. So this is talking, if I like um, public speaking was a major uh, fear issue for me. And when I became the author of my books and, my, and then I had to do book, uh, book tours and uh, I had audiences up to 2000 people to talk to. And with someone who is scared of uh, audiences, it, that was like the worst thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. The body hit me the day before. I couldn't sleep. My heart was pounding. I was vomiting. I was spewing. <clears throat> and then before I had to go on stage, I was just like ready to get some heart attack before the panic attack. Reverse everything, you know? <laughs> I, I totally feel you. I feel you. When I started this, you know, yeah. like I could just get to six and now talk to thousands. Yeah, I did my own. I did my Kung Fu Haka. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I, I'm that, so I went right into my hips, right in my groin, right into my belly, and oh, really hardcore. Yeah. And then when I went on stage, bang, my energy was in the hip. It was in the, in the Dantian, yeah. and it was controlling the fire. And I was completely calm in that moment. Yeah. And how many times when I finished the talk, people came up and said, oh, it's so good to listen to people who don't have any problems. I have so many problems with public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I said, yeah. to them, I yeah. said to them, you haven't seen me before I go on stage, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 So yeah. obviously this is a number one. Anxiety anxiety is a natural part of life. We can't do anything about it. Other than putting the fire out by water. So 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 this is where we gotta look into like it's it's a natural consequence of something warning us that we that the danger is at, uh, uh, impending so we, but if we know the technique we automatically are in control of that yes yep. so that's why we need to understand first of all it is the body not the mind so when we want to treat anxiety we need the body not the mind mm -hmm. and this now takes us to a major issue now and that the major issue is that um, anxiety all over the world is escalating to new, to new levels we haven't ever been before. Yeah. So there are two reasons at this stage, two reasons for it. Number one is the smartphone, the iPhone, or the, um, um, uh, the smartphone, whatever phone you have, but it's a smartphone. And number two is we live such high yang life, go, 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 and then COVID-19 made us stop. And as we relaxed, we became aware of our deficiencies of our body that we didn't see when we are on the go, 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 go. Oh, and as a result of that is, as soon as people started to relax, <clears throat> anxiety went up. So now we have a lot of people who stop work and the anxiety is going through the roof. Of course, now they're looking for someone to blame. They're gonna, um, they're gonna be because of the, the fear of the virus and whatever, but it's got nothing to do with that in fact because we are exposed to danger at all times. Just living in the city, crossing the road, you're living in much higher danger than every COVID endemic would ever cause on you, yeah? So the city is far more dangerous than COVID. So um, just about every aspect of our life is more dangerous than COVID. So suddenly facing um, COVID as the cause for the, for the fear is, is, is not correct. 
um, saying COVID is the cause for the anxiety is not correct. What is correct from a Chinese medicine perspective is because so many people are forced to stop. So many people had to exchange a yang, yang, yang life with yin, yin, yin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you descend into your yin and you don't have much yin established in your life, that means the body hasn't got much yin. What it means is the body hasn't got much water. Yes, because yeah. yin relates to water. Mm -hmm. Yin is water, water is yin. Yang is fire, yang is heart. Yes, yeah. so you can't get a heart attack if you completely relax. Ah, oh, what a lovely day, isn't it yeah. lovely? Yeah, and you just sit like this all day long like that. It's, you, you will die of obesity, but not heart attack. Yeah. 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 So if, you, if you're on the go all the time and you, you're rushing for one goal after another and every day is consumed by, by following up on what you need to be doing, that means you activate the yang. So now your whole body is activated by yang. So that means it will now fuel the fire in the heart. It will, it will make the fire go up, but it will consume the yin because fire consumes the yin, which is water. Mm -hmm. If you've got a pot of water on the stove and there's a big fire in order to heat up the water, it will boil the water very quickly and will consume the water in the pot. Yeah. So that means um, a high yang life will reduce the water in the body very quickly. <clears throat> So that means now the body is back to uh, um, um, uh, when you stop, you're realizing that there's not much water in the pot. Yeah. yeah. Now the fire and that burns, because the fire still burns, um, even though you stop, the fire is still burning because yang is stored in the body. Um, so the fire is still burning, but there's no water to calm it down. And because you can't be active, you can't engage with others, you can't roam around the streets, you can't go to your coffee shops, and you can't go to, into big meetings and, and feed the yang, you, 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 you notice the lack of the yin. And yeah. because you notice the lack of the yin, what happens now? The anxiety goes up. Yeah. And yeah. suddenly, little triggers. You just have a little bit of cup of tea and boom, you get anxiety. You have a little bit of a coffee, boom, you get anxiety. Someone uh, sends you a text, boom, you get anxiety. And before in the, in the yang life, you didn't notice that because you were not resting enough. But now in the COVID, people are resting and then becoming aware of the lack of the yin. And as a result of that is, that's why we have this skyrocketing of, of anxiety. Yeah. So don't blame COVID, blame yin. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that analogy. I totally agree. My lifestyle hasn't really changed at all, besides mm -hmm. less travel overseas in Australia, which is fantastic. I love being at home on Bribe Island. You know, it's uh, dreamlike. But I'm seeing so many people that are really struggling with the, sh the significant change in circumstances for them. And even like couples, you know, like couples having to spend so much more time together and, and stop you know, and not have their outlets outside the house so much and things like that put a lot of pressure on people. Um, and just being with kids all the time as well for homeschooling. It, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. It's, uh, it's a bit of a worry. I, I love yeah. the analogy in traditional Chinese medicine. They talk about how, um, you know, water is stronger than rock, right? And being able to go with the yeah. flow, you know, water will wear down rock. And I, I feel like that's what has been really important to me in this period as well is kind of just going with the flow you know not trying to fight anything not trying to be rock solid in anything but just going okay well what's the news now what are the new restrictions what's opening up you know like what's happening uh and just adapting it as we go so um did you want to talk about adaptation and 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 how that fits in with movement of flow movement of chi and lifestyle? First, of all, first of all obviously um there's a massive amount of uncertainties now because of the change Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we haven't seen the damages on the economy yet. So, and people can sense there's going to be some changes. <clears throat> and um, therefore, the worry is coming in. And so, worry and anxiety can, can feel the same, but they're fundamentally totally different. And um, so, we, but they can feed each other. That's the thing. So, anxiety 
um, is affiliates with the heart, with fire and the heart. Vori affiliates with the spleen, which is earth element, earth energy. It's a totally different energetics. Funda fundamentally nothing in common. However, they can actually feed each other. That's the thing. So as Vori goes up, it can actually lead to the depletion of yin. And then because Vori come, uh, 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 depletes the spleen, and the spleen is responsible for the production of blood and chi, which is the basis for yin. Mm -hmm. So that means when the spleen gets weak, uh, yin and blood also goes weak. If blood and yin goes weak, um, uh, a stimulus that triggers the fire and the heart can't be controlled due to the lack of yin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that means worry indirectly feeds anxiety. Anxiety um, actually burns out the yin. And that, that means um, the spleen re relies on yin in order to get strong. So a, there's a negative feedback cycle that actually leads to an, to an upward spiral of um, worsening of the situation. Yep. So because we're living in um, uncertain times now, we need to actually really start more and more get connected to the body. And um, because we can't, one thing is for sure, uh, uh, every therapist and social scientist who has that opinion in that, in that way, that life will not be the same after COVID is finished. Though no one really knows what goes on with COVID. Is it a hoax, whatever? The fact is it has caused a massive world uh, uh, panic. It has uh, caused a massive world, like the whole a world panic attack, basically. Mm. And um, um, you can tell the worst effect that other people will have a fundamental fear. Mm. Uh, people will have depleted kidney, depleted yin, that means there's not enough water, they are the most affected by COVID. People who have very strong uh, water yin, like a lot of martial artists, they, just don't, they don't even know what the problem is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they just don't understand, yeah? Yeah. Uh, then, um, then the other people are completely scared and they all reckon it's gonna get the next endemic and whatever, it's gonna be like millions of people dead and things like that. Firstly, we don't even know what goes on because the, the, the data doesn't add up. Um, it's now all over the world. Everyone knows most of the, uh, it's the, the, the figures we see are made up, they're man-made in order to get the stimulus from the government because if you call it a COVID death, you get more money. It's an ordinary death. And all you have to do, you have to say COVID-like symptom, which is um, 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 shortness of breath and weakness. But every sickness is affiliated with weakness and shortness of breath. So, so, yeah. so everyone can be uh, claimed to COVID um, like symptom, yeah? Yeah, some of that information coming out of the US from the doctors speaking out is just terrifying. They're changing yeah. medical practice for the first time in 50 years, putting something on a death certificate that doesn't actually have to be tested for. And yeah. then not only do they get $30,000 for, for claiming it to be COVID, but then if they give them a ventilator, which many people are arguing is the wrong treatment, they get $39,000. So they're actually being incentivized to do medicine, which goes against the principles of medicine. It's like mind blowing. Yeah, the ventilators from a Chinese medicine perspective may not even work because it's an inflammatory or disease due, due to spleen deficiency, um, yeah. not storing phlegm in the lungs. And yeah. respiratory, uh, it, you need to treat the spleen, not the lungs. That's what's happened. That's what they're saying is like they, they put them on a ventilator. They skip oxygen and, and all this sort of stuff, go straight to a ventilator, massive cytokine storm, massive inflammation, and people are crashing. It's like, yeah. we've never done this before and it's not working, but we're getting paid well for it. It's like yeah. not, not good. Yeah, because if they don't use the ventilators because they had to make all the space available for the, for the patients, for our COVID patients, but that means that they need, they need business. A yeah. hospital is in business. Yeah. Interesting. So if, if they use respirators, if they use all the COVID claims, they get more money. I mean, the whole yeah. thing. It's just yeah. like a, it's a natural consequence because they're all boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not so worried. I'm the, chilled the out. Hospitals are anxious of losing business because yeah. if they don't get the money, they can't pay the doctors. If they, they have to take the doctors off, the whole thing is just. It's insane. Well, it's ironic because it's, it's driving itself. Like I've seen doctors that own like eight emergency departments in California, right? And they're like, I'm having to lay staff off because no one's coming to the hospital. They're staying at home and having a heart attack because they're too scared to come in case they catch COVID. It's like <laughs> insane. So like the world's biggest health crisis we've ever had and the whole wards are empty. 
you know, all the elective sur- surgeries are gone and stuff like that. So they've actually damaged their own industry by the hype. It's like, it's a classic of seeing that kind of anxiety energy just collapse upon itself. It's not real. It doesn't have the yin. So what we, what we can say from a Chinese medicine perspective, where we don't go into judge a situation. We're just going to look at it energetically. And what we are exposed to is the world panic yeah. disorder. A world panic disorder. Everyone is in panicking, in panic mode. And people, looks like even people want to panic in order, they want to feed the fear because then I feel more comfortable, yeah? So, um, so what we need to look into, why do people want to go to this now? And obviously this relates to, we have been too fast on the yang, too much in the yang, and now it's time for the yin. That's yep. all that it is. Yep. So it's a restructure of the yin. That's why those, um, because, because I'm surrounded with a lot of people who live the path, they're, they're truly dedicated to the cosmic path, they do the practice every day. These people don't have any fear, there's no concern. They don't have any, they're not worried. Yeah. Because they all along have lived for the yin, yes? Yeah. And um, so those who live correctly are the, are the people who don't panic. Those who live incorrectly are the ones who panic. That is the observation what we have now. Yeah. So that means, the, what we, the lesson we get from here is we all need to learn how to live correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that means when we want to succeed in business, which is a certain quality of yang, we need to rise the yang, but we need to also nourish the yin. So that's how Chinese medicine looks at it. Like we, we climb up the ladder of success, do the ladder of yin and yang. So for every level we move up, which is we, we, we generate one step forward, but that we need to bring the yin in. Then we move forward, yang. Now we bring the yin in, yang, yin. So it goes balanced up. So if we just focus on yang, 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 it's going to be like this, and eventually, yeah, it's going to fall on its ass. That's what yeah. the situation is now. Yeah, and um, that's exactly why I talked about it in my podcast last last year. I did a whole series of podcasts, and I mentioned over and over. And I said it's going to collapse soon. And I already mentioned that in September last year in the podcast, it's just, there is not enough yin in our society and it will collapse. Something will happen very soon in the next few months that will force us to go yin. And every, every person who follows the path of yin and yang can, could see this happen. Yeah. And so yeah. it's such a, that, that COVID thing, that is such a minor virus, but it's massive in terms of the impact it has on people. Mm. It's like 1% virus has got a 99% impact. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've heard uh, the doctors speaking out about it, that it's had the best public relations campaign out of any infection ever in history. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. So, so really, what it's, it's, like, it's almost like the inner world of every human being of 7 billion people, the inner world is coming up and saying, Look at me, I need him. Look at me, I need him. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. I wish the, I wish the different... using it as an excuse. I watched a different YouTube last night. There's these guys, they actually live in China and they, they, they go around China and they, they just talk about all sorts of interesting philosophical stuff riding motorbikes. They're pretty cool, cool guys. And they were just mentioning these buildings, right? And some of these like cities where China's just blown up, like expanded in property so quickly. And they were talking about how the, the whole real estate thing in, in China, they're trying to build these properties so fast, but no one lives in them. And they're all an investment, but they saw some of these buildings being built. And literally only a few years later, three to five years later, they ride past and they go and check out the buildings and the buildings are falling apart. And that's exactly this, right? It's like no substance. It's no yin. It's, it's, it's all like, yeah, let's make money. Let's like go berserk. Let's build fast, fast, fast. But it's cardboard. It's just going to collapse. It's a it's a house of cards. It's got no yeah. real quality to it. So that's that's exactly the same situation. Yeah, that's like it's just basically what COVID is. <laughs> you just described it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so that's why. So we got to be aware that the reason why anxiety is suddenly going through the roof is because we are experiencing our body in a in a state of mind we haven't been before. It's unusual. Mm. It's foreign territory. Mm. Most people have anxiety because it's 
they've never been in that situation. Okay, how can I connect with my body? Because when it comes to anxiety, there's only one way out of it by using the body, develop a relationship with the body. Yeah. That's why I mentioned my own personal experience of anxiety because I tried all mental techniques and nothing has helped. Yeah. yeah. All the thousands of people I worked with had the same observation. Nothing has helped. Right. But by the time you work with the body, anxiety is the history. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. so this is obviously the first thing. Why the, the other, I said, there's two reasons for COVID, uh, for anxiety. And one is obviously people are suddenly needing to rest and needing to go in as never before. And now they need to build that. Um, the second cause for this sudden spike in anxiety all over the world it's due to the use of iPhones and smartphones. Because what happens is um, we are now living a life where, the, where our smartphone has become a part of our body. It's become like an, an extension of our limbs. Um, for example, when people, when they forget their phone, I mean, it doesn't happen to most people, but the occasional person, they forget everything else, but not the phone. Yeah, but in case someone does forget the phone, which is a lot one in a million, they feel immediately disconnected. Yeah. So wherever you go, always have the people always have the phone beside them. So we have now become a double uh, a, a double identity society. So uh, one aspect of ourselves is in our body, but then we're dumping another aspect of our mind onto the phone. Yeah. Our phone stores everything. The memories, the photos, everything we see something, we look at it and we take a snapshot of it. You know? yeah. So the, the phone now is in fact an extension of myself. So it's me here, just in body, and there's me just in phone. Yeah. 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 So we're moving towards um, a next stage, which is referred already in AI, artificial intelligence, as the neuralink construct the new link construct. So in about five, 10 years, we will have so many more developments in that term where we're using neural links with AI that will enhance our bodily functions. Mm. Now we already use this with our phone because I, if I've got an idea, I work with my phone. My phone is supporting my life. So because I now live, I live in, basically what happens is we live in two frames. One frame is my body, my mind, my, my mental perception within my body. Then the other one is the frame, which is in my phone. So one perception of myself is within my phone, with my social media, with my emails, with my social profile. The other one is the perception within myself. So obviously this can lead to a massive identity crisis. Oh, oh, oh what do you mean? I just hang on, I just gotta get a selfie. <laughs> Man, that is, oh, that to me, that's another example of like yang, yang, yang and no substance, right? Yeah. Where these, these people are just, there's this behavior in society. It's so easy to see now. I even go, sometimes I go to a nice resorts and you see the Insta people that are at the resort to get their pictures. Yes. They're not enjoying the resort. They're just there to get their social yeah. media identity. People identity. live in two frames. The majority of the people live in two frames. So, so you've got the mind that you perceive in your body, but you don't know exactly what that is. But then there is the, the, your phone, which takes care of the rest. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so now, as a result of that is, there's an identity crisis. Because if you take the phone away, you get withdrawal symptoms, just like a drug addict, but you get an identity crisis. Yeah. And so, so obviously, what happens now is, that will lead to anxiety, big time. If you don't know who you are, and when they interviewed millennials and the new generation, the 20, the, the 20 year olds, most of them don't know, even know who they are anymore. And obviously they don't have any rooting in themselves. They don't have a connection to themselves. And they get like anxiety and panic disorders as never before. <clears throat> so obviously living in, in two frames means where is your center point? How do you ground yourself? How do you center yourself? So we can't stop evolution. We can't say we need to stop the phones. We can't say do not use social media. We can't say do not use AI, artificial intelligence. And we can't do negative 
um, uh, prospectus about the Neuralink because we don't know yet what that really means. So we're moving into an into incredible future, but that's it's a fact. Still, we are by nature a spirit, a soul, and that is dependent on chi. That is dependent on, on our bodily functions to connect with our chi, with our so we can cause blood flow. If you don't have a good circuit on your phone, like with Zoom today, the circuit was not connected. Mm. You, the frame in the identity of your social media and your phone is not working. So we do everything about it in order to correct it and control it. Um, the same needs to apply to the body now. So of course, there's all these incredible networks building up all over the world, 5G, whatever, next, next year is gonna be 6G, after that's going to be 8G, it will not stop. Um, but what, when you look at the side effect that those networks cause, there are all blood deficiency, yin deficiency patterns. Yes? Yeah. So what we need to do is here, the situation is okay, we need to get into the body. Yes? So we can't stop evolution. We can't stop technology. There is something happening here that we will only um, understand when we're in there. In, in hindsight, we will understand, but we will not understand in the future. So therefore, the anxiety is going up through the roof. Yeah, yeah. badly. Yeah. Yeah. And so the anxiety is going up because we can't comprehend. We, we will never comprehend the future. But everything accelerating to a pace that most people can't cope, cope with because it's going too fast. Therefore, we've got to look at what holds us together. Okay, at the moment, we live in two frames our body and our, our phone. In five years, it's gotta be a neural link somewhere. It's gonna be something else. There will be five devices around us. Mm. So we're gonna have five frames. It's gonna be even more than now. I, so, I even see that today in Singapore, right? A lot of people in Singapore, they've got their personal phone. They've got a business phone. They've actually got a separate yeah. phone and a separate already. video accounts the whole right. day. Yeah, three frames already. Yeah. And um, so that's gonna be more and more and more. more. So to, holding, to hold it all together becomes a real challenge. If you use your mind to hold on to it, it's not possible. As I said at the beginning, the mind is a substance. It's not something ethereal. It's a substance. It's blood. It's related to blood. It's like water. Yeah, it's liquid. Yeah. So uh, if, you, if you have three frames or two frames to operate in and you're losing the connection to each of those frames, that means because of your mind is, has become deficient. That means there's no blood to hold it together. If your blood is strong, you immediately return to who you are and immediately then engage with whatever's on your phone. You don't have identity crisis. You use both frames at the same time because you're fully connected in your root. If your hara is strong, if your core is strong, you will be, you will be immediately engaging with social media and not losing yourself. You will be yeah. immediately return to yourself and not losing within yourself when you suddenly have to engage with yin. Yeah. yeah. So the real challenge we have now is how to get in touch with yin. That's the true challenge. Not to understand this incredible technology, not to worry about 5G, not to worry about anything because we can't do anything about it because it's technology. It's going to be more next year. So what we need is go within and build the blood, build the, build the yin. And that will automatically take care of anxiety. Yeah. And that's, that's a way, you know, in so many ways, I think that's why the Tao has survived and thrived. Yes. Because yes. it comes back to control what you can control, stay in balance and just, you know, build yourself up. And that's, yeah, instead of trying to be the rock and fight everything, be the water. Just, you know, go with the flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah because we're, like in Chinese medicine, it says over and over, we are destined for incredible future for superhuman powers, for superhuman, it will get more and more and more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we will have spaceships very soon. We're going to be traveling to, to planets. We're going to do, we're going to have clinics on, on Mars. We're going to have observations on Jupiter. All that is, it's the fact it's reality. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. But what holds us together so we don't burn out due to anxiety and panic attacks because what's the point of going to Mars if you suffer from panic attacks? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it means it's meaningless. <laughs> it's meaningless, yeah. Because uh, then you might as well be stuck in the car park at, at, at Maya Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, I can't get back in that space shuttle to get back to Earth. Oh, oh, it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> it, 
<laughs> yeah, major Tom. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Love Bowie. Love Bowie. I've been educating my three-year-old with classic music lately, introducing it to Bowie. Hey, uh, what, what's Space Oddity? Sorry? Space Oddity? Yeah. Oh, totally. well, that's it. a good one. That's it. a good song to, to be introduced to at that age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so cool. So we had a couple of questions. What about uh, with the, the gallbladder and the rent points you mentioned? How many times should we tap these to reduce anxiety? Should we be tapping them as a bit of a routine? Uh, tapping? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Tapping the, the gallbladder and the rent points. Yeah, they can do um, uh, merging with your gallbladder point by, by, by going into your body, by working with, with those points, like in this 15 minute workout. Yeah. Like the principle of yoga. Yeah, so big hip exercises, squats, yeah. you know, those sort of things, lunges. Minute workout is the essence of what you will, will do with years and years of training in Tai Chi or yoga. Yeah. You're just trying to, you have to get there quickly. And the yeah. 15 minute workout, I've been researching fitness for 40 years. So yeah. in this 15 minute workout, I looked at the essence. What do we need to activate? Because if you activate those points, you will activate. The next thing is we need to take herbs and the herb that will regulate anxiety immediately is um, the uh, Hulunum bamboo formula, the bamboo formula, All maybe right. you put a link up. Um, because that formula is designed to take the overactive mind, the, the fire in the heart, it, it, it takes all the energy down into your heart. So, and I've seen people who were, were taking five, six Xanax pills in order to control anxiety yeah. and I've seen the bamboo formula control that immediately without the use of Danax. Yeah. And it's like, um, uh, it's, look, it's a lifesaver for anyone who suffers from anxiety. Um, because, it, because the, um, the bamboo formula uh, benefits the gallbladder channel. It activates the points in the gallbladder that are responsible for distributing the chi and the blood to the heart to put the heart at ease. That's why, um, for me, the, the, um, I used the, the bamboo formula excessively in the beginning stages when I had to do public talks because I had such fear of public speaking and anxiety was going through the roof and because I was projecting me collapsing on stage and all kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, the bamboo formula immediately um, regulated the gallbladder function and took the, um, the overactive mind down into subduing it and put the heart at ease and I was completely calm. Yeah, cool. Uh, cool. It's, it works just like Xanax or Valium without the side effect. Yeah, so I'll put that link in there uh, from your yeah. lifestyle medicine site. The other thing is that I found really good, um, and you, you know, you talked about public speaking. I had exactly the same thing. I was freaking out doing bigger and bigger talks uh, and speaking from stage. And um, Rachel Jane Gruber, actually, the Art of Feminine Presence, I did a course with her, and she was talking about coming back to the Dantian Hara sacral chakra or womb space, she calls it for, the, for, the, for a lot of the women. And that just had such a big impact on changing the way people talked. I can almost see it now when people are talking with their head as mm -hmm. opposed to talking from their gut. Yes. You know, talk about it. A different impact. And, it's, and she, has a, she has a cool thing. I love it. She says about, are you home? Ask yourself if you're home, meaning back into that, like her and you done to the end. Correct. Uh, so as a, uh, as a trigger to check if you're home is every time you, you see eyeballs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every time you see eyeballs, are you home? Bang, get back into your home. Really yeah. empowering stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like the, because if you really correct, if you activate the cord correctly, you go on stage and you actually don't care what others think of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that that's incredible, powerful. incredible peace within yourself. And that's the aim of all yoga practices. That's the aim of all Tai Chi practices. To be so at peace in the most um, rigorous stimulus. So just, that means you're free. Yeah. That's like, like uh, when people ask me what's the most important thing now in this life, I said, study yoga or Tai Chi. Do your practice. Learn how to connect to your blood and yin. Circulate blood. Learn the practices. There's no investment more important right now than get learning techniques such as yoga and tai chi this is the most important time ever uh, uh, because we what we see now with COVID 19 is only the beginning of something that will get more intense mm. so if people losing the plot already they're going to lose the plot in one year big time yeah 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 Good and, uh, 
Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's so people will not die of COVID. People will die of panic, I believe. Yeah, that's I where totally, it's heading to. Totally. I, I'm so it's, grateful to my dad. He uh, told me that. Yeah. I, I can see this everywhere. People do really crazy things now because of panic. When you panic, you do stupid things. You don't do rational things. Yeah. You don't do pre, you don't do meditated things. You don't. You just you just you're going to reactive patterns. And so many people are reacting now. Yeah. I've never seen so many reactive patterns in my in my line of work, and all the people I work with, they're all observed massive reactive patterns everywhere yeah yeah and so we now this is now one of the most reactive society we have been in mm. and um, so it's going to be more and more and more yeah all you have to do is put on facebook something about take a position about covid you're going to get attacked by someone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right yeah i'm really grateful for my father he taught me at a very young age uh it's panic that kills people you know we used to do a lot of water sports and water skiing and oh, surfing yeah. and stuff and just not to panic, you know, just to be calm. And you know, if you're underwater, hold your breath, of course. But you know, it's the panic that, that terrifies people. Yeah, no, it's a look in my training because I I, I train very hard, obviously, um, and I, I follow like the guidance of Navy SEALs, for example, and, and yeah, all the and Navy SEAL training is all about not to panic. Yeah, exactly. Okay, keep and calm. All it is, do not panic. They take they they condition them to the point where they will not panic and stay calm. Yeah. That's, that's why they win. When you go yeah. into combat, the person who will win is the, is the person with the skills, obviously, but the person who is in control of their mind. Yeah, totally. That's, if you go in there and you lose the plot, you're going to you reveal, like, that, that's in, in a martial art, you always trigger a person, make them scared, so you, you hope for them to panic because then you can see their motives. They can see, the, they show their weaknesses, and bang, you whack them, they're finished. Yeah. Yeah. And the, whereas the ones who are very calm, you can't work, you, can, you can't com compete against, you can't win, it's not victory because they are control of their blood, they're control of the yin. Mm. And that's the strength, that's the power, that's the power. That's what the Hara does in New Zealand. They pack, move, 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 they pack the power into the body. And that's blood and yin. Blood right. and yin is your power. Boom. And, and that's what we need. And that's why. We, this really, uh, what we need now for anxiety is get strong, get as strong as possible. Mm. I always said as a paramedic, even though we had a, a bunch of drugs to draw on and different procedures, my most powerful treatment was reassurance. Just put my hand on someone, look them in the eye. I had to be calm within me. And the more I could be calm, the more I could help the patient be calm. And yeah. that would instantly reduce their symptoms. Yeah, yeah, I totally, I totally, this is where it is. That's what you, yeah, I totally believe that. That's a, yeah. when the, the therapist all along, and that's what I always keep it grounded and assured. Yeah. So and one more question um, from, yeah. from, from the, uh, the audience. Thanks so much for everyone for, for posting your comments and, your, and your, uh, uh, your love and your questions. We really appreciate it. And it's, it helps stimulus. So uh, what about taking medication for anxiety long term and, and how to come off that? Um, you know, uh, the okay, question was sort of, you know, should I just come off it? I think you always got to be discerning and have some wisdom when it comes to medication. Uh, but yeah, you know, ultimately our health is our own responsibility and we go to healthcare providers as a service to help us manage and be responsible for our health. So what we do is ultimately up to us, but yeah, there needs to be some wisdom in that. Would you like to comment on that, Yost? Yeah. I mean, I did. That's, that's, that's a speciality of me. I deal with this all the time. I've been dealing with anxiety medication for, for 30 years in, in my line of work because every drug I use that I work with finished off in, in anxiety medication. So I've treated Valium, anxiety, barbiturates, you name it, I've treated everything. Um, so, and I've took everyone, everyone I worked with got off it. Mm. Um, it's, you don't do rapid withdrawal, you do gradual withdrawal. Yeah. No slow decline. Because mm. you started slow on this journey, you need to get slowly off it. Yeah, don't don't rap, don't go rapid. But while you while you don't start reducing till you got a program in place, you need to have a program first. You need to understand exactly what to do. Um, I outlined that all in my book, Rabbit's Guide to Recovery. And uh, because anxiety medication is it, it, it's a major focus in that book. Um, uh, uh, and because you don't give up without a plan. This is where everyone goes 
um, uh, always uh, goes back on medication is because they're stopped without a plan. The drug's doing something profound. Medication like Xenax and Valium, this is a very powerful substance. And it's very, 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 it has a massive impact on bodily functions. So it's not like a cup of tea. You know, it's not like having a, a ball of cornflakes or something like that. It's just, it's a serious, powerful substance. Yeah. And you have to respect it for what it is. So that means you've got to, first of all, show its biggest respect and understand that it's a powerful substance. Mm. And um, so that means you have to provide an alternative intelligence. You can't go against that power without an alternative plan. It's not yeah. possible. Yeah. As, um, um, it's the, the, the substance is too powerful. Xenax is one of the most, um, uh, most, most, yeah, it's a very, it's a very powerful substance because it's, it's, it's a big seller. <laughs> It's one of the biggest sellers. Yeah. yeah, so, seller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it wouldn't be a, a big seller if it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, you've got to look at there's a massive intelligence in those substances. Therefore, we first of all, we've got to provide an alternative plan. Yeah. 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 So that means, this, and that's, I outlined that in depth, and that, that involves like um, uh, HARA practices, like HAKA and uh, and this sort of stuff, like the, the core training, like the 50 minute core training. Um, it requires this, uh, it requires lots of Chinese herbs. It requires obviously lots of um, uh, supplements and all that. And once that is in place, then actually it will start working. And then you've read your, you just, you withdraw. And uh, I've seen people like, I've worked with people who took like 10 Xenax tablets a day. Some of them had 10 Xanax plus 50 Valiums. That's the level I work with. So that's like 60 tablets a day for, for anxiety. And I've, I've seen them reduce within two months to zero and never look back, never missed it once. So, yeah, so, that's, that's so, nice. so I've seen incredible uh, results in that regard. Yeah, yeah, I have too. I've, I've seen people, um, even when I just did Qigong before I had redox and Asia, people... Yeah. Uh, you know, I never told them to go up the medication, you know, legally you've got to be careful around that. That's, that's a, the, their own decision and, and working in with a physician. But um, yeah, people going off medication for, for mental health things just through doing more Qigong, just two, yeah. two lessons a week for three months, blood pressure, you know, depressing, dep any depressants, that sort of stuff. Like it was amazing. We've also seen people with the, with the redox for particularly the, the uh, depression kind of conditions, like really get improvements. Um, have I you believe seen, have you totally seen like that with uh, with anxiety specifically for the redox? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe we talk next week about depression. And yeah, there's a lot good. of things I can talk about because depression is a totally different territory again. Because depression involves spleen and heart, but also kidney. So yeah. it's 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 a three organ um, affiliation, and um, because you got the depression, which is a natural condition, then you got the depression, which is pathological. And um, so you've got to look at, okay, what is, when is the depression clinical and when is the depression pathological? Because, mm. um, uh, uh, because uh, depression can be nothing else than a uh, uh, restorative maneuver. That means to yang, depression brings it back to yin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so if it's a restorative maneuver, uh, as psychology calls it, then you don't treat it as a clinical problem. Yeah. Yeah. So would, you good. would destroy the, the restorative maneuver. That means you take the mechanism away from the body to heal itself. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a great yeah. topic for next yeah. week. I've already had someone say that. I'd love to hear that. Look, one other thing that came to my mind is, um, so I, I discovered through, um, actually after I, I had my major healing crisis with Lyme and stuff like that, that I had uh, pyrals disorder. So that means that I, uh, genetically, I expre um, excrete too much zinc and B6. Uh, through my, my urine, my kidneys, and it, it's genetic, it's all through my family. Um, and the, a lot of behavioral conditions that are associated with that are around anxiety, anxiety, uh, COD, uh, compulsive obsessive sort of yeah. behaviors, um, even ex anorexia and addictive kind of stuff because of this feeling of not feeling settled. Um, but that, again, like what you've talked today is about kidney, right? It's like you've got to build the yin and build the water of the kidney. Yes, the water. And that's a kidney condition. So like, it's just so often when I talk to you, I'm just really grateful. You always connect dots that I couldn't even see the dots were there, you know, but yeah, you, you, you're drawing the lines for me and always really helped me see a bigger picture of health and well-being, a very different perspective 
uh, as, a, as a holistic practitioner with TCP? Yeah, you could say that's what anxiety is. Anxiety is just dots, but no connection. Yeah? And if you, if you draw the line between each dot, you don't have anxiety. There you go. Yeah. And that's why we need to study. That's why we need to practice Tai Chi and yoga. Because with those practices, we connect, we draw the line between each dot. So there's every morning when I wake up, like I always need to say, I don't want to do my Tai Chi, but there's no alternative. Yes. So, so every morning when I do my Tai Chi, I connect, I see all those dots, I can't make connection to it. And then while I do the moves, it draws the lines between the connection. By the practice, I, I connect to everything, I feel wholesome, complete, and I understand where I'm heading towards, and the future is clear. Mm -hmm. But before, when I wake up, the future is never clear. Mm. Yeah. So, which is why when people wake up, the, the, the anxiety is usually the highest when they wake up. The idea is not to get into it mm. and connect, connect the dots by a line. And that's obviously the practice. Yeah. And then bang, suddenly it's no, and there's no anxiety. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you very, very much. Uh, more requests for you to record a Tai Chi video. <laughs> that's not the first time that that's, we've heard of that or even Zoom lessons or something like that. Um, I've actually seen a few of them happening globally. Like, you know, teachers. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can send you a link about the... Um, um, Udemy makes online courses for Tai Chi and, and Qigong. They're really good. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. They're on $16 and they do online courses and they're run by top masters. It's all there. We've got heaps of resources, heaps of resources. Udemy, U-E-D-E-M-Y. They are an online course agency. It's a platform for uh, online courses. And um, they're like, you see, the universe will not provide a problem without a solution. Yes? It's, it's, it, that's what, it's a promise by Tao, that there's always a solution. And these massive problems we have now, um, there are massive resources all over the world to, to, to heal. Yeah? And um, these online courses are the best for that stuff. I'll say Ud Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. U -E Udemy, Udemy. U-D-E-M-Y, yeah. Udemy.com. Yeah. And just look for Tai Chi on there. Yeah, just go, yeah, but I can send you a link if you want to spread yeah. it. To your yeah, mind. send us a link to a trusted one. That'd be great. Because there's plenty of stuff. Plenty of stuff. Plenty yeah. of stuff. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time again, Yoss. It's always great talking to you. Thank you, everyone for the, in the audience and, and people watching the replay. I uh, really appreciate your comments. And um, yeah. Have another amazing week. We'll come back next week, same time. Uh, and yeah, hopefully Zoom is cooperating a little better. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch up at, at uh, 10 a.m. Brisbane time uh, for the live. And we'll talk about depression. That's a really pertinent, you know, really important uh, conversation right now. Thank you, Yost. You're amazing. Oh, thank, you, thank you, Justin. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Um, actually, I was just going to say for anyone that does want to learn a bit more about the Redox and ASEA, uh, there is a masterclass on today at 12 o'clock. It's not, it's only half an hour away, actually. Uh, the link's there in the, in the chat box. And it's just real stories from real people um, interviewed by Janine Babalskis. Um, so you can just register with that bit.ly link. And uh, it's just, yeah, to people telling their stories about how uh, the Redox changed their life. And by all means, if you'd like to learn more about the Redox, uh, go back to the person that invited you today. Uh, if you're looking for the links to share with people, please go back to the person that invited you today. And uh, yeah, we, we thank you so much for your, for your amazing conversation, Joss. Have a great week, eh? Yep, see you. See you, mate. Thank you. <laughs>